Hey, I'm Chris Zep from Make Everything, and today we're making these beer walls. Basically, this is a giant crate that holds kegs on one side and has beer taps on the other. Check it out. All right, so getting started with this project, um, basically just a bunch of material from Home Depot. More material than I really felt like carrying, but you know, you have to overbuy on something like this. The construction of these is very basic. These are very, very simple to build. It's a two by four frame with some strutting, um, half inch plywood on the outside wrapped in a clear pine with that pallet wood. So setting up on the miter saw, I've got a stop lock and I just gang cut all my stuff. Uh, these are just bur uh, burrell. They're a Doug fir. They're very dry. They're a little more money from Home Depot. They're a premium two by four, but I found them to be extremely straight. So I use those setting stop blocks and just gang cutting everything. With a project like this, the planning that you can do before can save you a lot of time in the execution. So uh, I did a little bit of planning in SketchUp and I'll have the drawings for the plan and the dimensions of everything in the description down below. So if you want to build one for yourself, you can. Now, these are very basic, like I said. It's more or less a rectangular two by four frame, uh, three of them per wall, and then it has four vertical legs, and that all ties together to make a nice rigid rectangular crate, and then it's gonna get wrapped in the plywood. I did have to build two of these for the client, but I'm really only gonna show one in this video because they are exactly the same. So I'm just using glue and some three inch construction screws to tie these together. Um, I'm not going crazy, I'm only doing one screw on each of them and that's because they're gonna get supplementarily um, attached with those vertical two by fours as well and then everything again is gonna be tied together by the screws that I put through the half inch sheathing. So I build the three rectangles and then I start adding in my verticals and I'm using the corners to just make sure everything lines up nice. I'm driving in screws at opposing angles so that they're pulled tight into the corners and also have a little bit of tension on them, but two screws in each is fine. Uh, you know, since I cut all my material the same length, I know these frames are gonna fit on one another and I'm using those spacer blocks just to make sure that um, this middle divider is high enough. Now these are designed specifically so that a keg can fit inside the wall. So it was important that I made that divider at a high enough level that the kegs would be able to get in there. Um, so this is basically attaching the top of that frame and again just two screws in opposing directions and that's enough to really keep these things super sturdy and rigid now i added the casters to this one and i realized later that this was kind of a premature thing to do because i wanted to ply with the bottoms so i went ahead and put the casters on this one but I will wind up taking them off a little bit later in the video and adding some plywood, but it just helped a lot to roll these around. They're not super heavy um, as is. It's like the weight of maybe four or five two by fours, but it's just a lot easier to get them around the shop if they're on wheels. Now with that frame done, the other frame done, I'm able to start ripping down my plywood. Now again, this is half inch sheathing um, and nothing crazy. It didn't have to be finished grade or anything because it's gonna get covered in the pallet wood, but I'm trying to save time. Um, I had to build two of these and I only had about two evenings to do it in. So really not a lot of time for this project at all with you know going out and getting the material. So I'm taking all four sheets of this half inch plywood and I'm actually screwing them together with two and a half inch construction screws. And I'm just gonna take my track saw and rip these in one shot. Um, this is a Makita cordless track saw that I'm using and it will get a full two inch depth of cut uh, at the maximum. And it, you know, these don't need to be perfect. Like I said, they're all getting trimmed out, but the track saw does a really, really nice job. So they're all within, I would say, a uh, 16th of an inch of their dimension that they're supposed to be. Once they're cut, I can pull them apart, get rid of a bit of a, that sawdust and just pull that other piece off.
and you see I'm ripping on a piece of this uh, pink insulation foam. It just means, you know, it gives me a place for my blade to go so I don't cut into my tabletop. And uh, it's nice and lightweight and gets out of the way really easily. Now the rest is just sort of cross-cutting some of that plywood. Um, I'm only covering three sides of the crate with the plywood. The back side is going to be completely open so that, you know, kegs can be put inside these things. Um, these are being built for a rental company, like a catering and rental company. Um, they'll be used at weddings and other events like that so that the clientele can pour their own beer from the keg. So these things are very easily scalable. You could easily build one of these for your own use. Um, you could take the wheels off it and make it a permanent thing if you had a keg and the means to do it um, in your own home. So very scalable and pretty eye-catching too when they're all done. So now that all the plywood's ripped down, I can start attaching it to the frames. And the tool that I'm gonna be using for this is something I, I've used a lot and you may have seen it in some of my other videos, but this is a collated screw gun. Um, this one's from Milwaukee and they're typically made for drywall. Basically what this is, it's a high RPM screw gun that uses screws in a plastic strip so that you don't have to go and load every screw as you go. So I'm using inch and five eighths drywall screws, coarse thread, and um, they provide a great grab on this type of material into wood, even going through plywood into, into basically studs. They work really, really well, and it is so much faster than trying to apply those screws by hand. Um, you can see how quickly I'm able to just bang through it. And now I wind up having to take those wheels back off and plywood the bottom so that I have a shelf for the kegs to rest on when the project is completed. So I put that half inch piece of plywood there and then again the other thing that's nice is that you can operate the collated screw gun one handed and you can really just bang through and put in screws. Um, they're also pretty inexpensive so there's really no way to put in too many. Um, now that I added the plywood there I decided to switch to uh, two and a half inch decking screws with fender washers just to make sure that if these things had a lot of weight on them the screws weren't going to rip out and uh i like using decking screws for stuff like this i feel like i really trust them laterally um, and i don't have to worry about them breaking so now with the box totally sheathed it was time to trim it and i'm using a one by three clear pine for some of the trim uh the verticals mainly and I'm using a 1x4 clear, clear pine for the remainder of the trim, which is going to be the horizontals. And the idea is that these are supposed to look like sort of rustic crates. So um, with something like this, since the dimensions sort of change as you go, you know, I'm sort of rough cutting things. And there isn't really a crazy defined finished dimension. I'm kind of freewheeling it as I go. I'm, you know, you want to let the piece decide the size and shape of your trim in some cases so you know i'm putting spacer blocks in i'm measuring as i go and basically cutting on the fly and trimming this out like you would trim out a room um for an instance like this where i only had to make two it worked out perfect if i had to make like six or seven of these things i probably would try and gang cut more of the trim but you know i really didn't don't think i lost the time doing it like this so the horizontals, like I said, are the one by four, and the client actually has two more of these that someone else made, and the ones that he has are actually two crates stacked on top of each other. So we wanted to continue on with that look. So in the center, I'm putting this band of one by four, and it's two layers of it, so that when you look at this, it looks as though this is two crates stacked on top of each other. Um, gives like a nice rustic look, um, and it's it's pretty good. Came out really nice. So again, um, attaching this one by four, and to attach this, I'm using inch and a quarter 18 gauge brad nails, and I'm not using any glue. The reason I'm not using any glue is because these things tend to change you know like the requirements for this might change or the dimension for it might change i didn't want to lock myself in with pling all this stuff down and then potentially having the client say hey we got to make a quick change you know how are we going to do that i'd want up having to basically build new ones so the inch and a half brads had a nice amount of grab i actually tried to pull a piece off and i couldn't get it off so i'm not worried about these going anywhere and the corner blocks like i said are going to be the one by three material and this just frames everything in really nice. The infill is going to be a pallet wood. And the pallet wood that I got, you know, normally I would go and 
rip up pallets and stain the wood and do it myself. But with only two days to do this project, there was just no time to uh, do that. So I wound up actually buying pallet wood from Home Depot. Um, but before I apply the pallet wood, you'll notice that all this wood is raw and it needs to be stained. Instead of staining it in advance and worrying about those cuts, I decided to just stain it in place. And this will allow me to fill any of the gaps, any corners that might need stain. And I can also fill a little bit of that void in the center. So I'm using a dark walnut stain, which just gives sort of a nice brown look. Um, this clear pine that I use stains up really nicely. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now that that's done, I can start unpacking this faux barn board and it feels wrong paying for pallet wood, but this stuff was pretty easy to deal with, although it was pretty expensive at about $2.50 a square foot. So I sorted through it all and then it was time to cut it all to size. <sighs> all right, so here's a quick trick for how I'm gonna set this up. Um, 44 inches is my distance between those um, two vertical supports and I'm going to run with that number. So I'm going to put my saw down, I'm going to use my table here, I'm going to go out 44 inches, make a mark, and then I'm going to bring my stop right up to 44. I'll throw a clamp in there if I can find one. And, uh, so now that's clamped down at 44. So now what that's going to allow me to do, it's going to allow me to cut single pieces to 44 very easily. And it's also going to allow me to make two cuts equal 44 by cutting one at a random length, then butting the other one against it and making a second cut. Because I want it to look kind of random and staggered. So this trick with the stop lock works great when you're doing this kind of work. It's a trick that I picked up doing flooring when you have to have random lengths. So that stop lock is going to allow me to really quickly get these cut at what's going to look like random lengths um, and not have to worry about measuring every single piece. My goal with this though, and you know, if you ever do a project like this, there are those factory edges that I, you know, I really believe that those should be the ones that meet up with each other. So all my cut edges are always going against that clear trim on the sides. So all the seams in the middle, in the field of these, of these crates are a raw edge to a raw edge from the factory. Um, and I don't concern myself with ripping down the upper or lower piece yet. You know, it's more efficient to do the field work right away and then get on the table saw and do all your ripping at once. So it's pretty, you know, straightforward, just cutting, measuring, trying to keep that pattern looking good and random. And then what I decided to do was on the sides, since I had the room, I would just do single pieces. And the, the pieces that came from the boxes are 48 inches. And this wound up at a measurement of around 22 inches to fill in that side field. So I was able to get two pieces out of each piece from the box and just come back in with those inch and a quarter brads, tack everything off. I did six nails per piece, again, leaving the rips on the top and the bottom for the last part. No reason to do those until the very end. And you can see just kind of carrying through, nailing this on. Like I said, very straightforward and easily scalable. You'll notice I'm using a battery powered nailer. I get a lot of flack for that, but I'm telling you, I've been using this battery powered Ryobi nailer for like five years. It's not sponsored or anything, but I can tell you if you do little trim work and you know you want something that you can run around the shop with, I have shop air, I never use it. I always use this battery thing. So, you know, consider it. They're not expensive and it's way better than dragging a hose around. Anyway. I finished applying all these pieces and then, like I said, I went over to the table saw and just started ripping down the last little bits and pieces that needed to be done. Um, starting with the side pieces, I had already selected pieces that I would use, ripped them to the length, made sure they were a nice tight fit. This one wound up being a little bit of an angle because the widths of the boards were a little irregular as I went up the wall, so this I had to rip on a taper. I just drew a line and I freehand ripped it on the table saw, got a really nice tight fit in there, nailed it in. Um, same thing for the bottom, did a quick rip, put that one in there and this thing buttoned up really nicely. 
the final step on this was just to drill holes for the tap handles. Now you can see the box on the right hand side, how it looks from the back, so how the kegs would go in there. And we had decided on a height, me and the client beforehand, and I knew I wanted to keep it centered on one of those boards. Um, each one of these is gonna have four tap handles, but I only had one at the time to do, sort of test. I wound up drilling a 7 8 hole straight through and the tap handles screw right on, really, really simple. And you know, anything like this, you wanna be really mindful of those holes. You know, you've gotten this far, you don't wanna make a mistake there. So make sure everything is lined up nice and um, looking good. Overall, this was a pretty good little project. Came out nice, I'm happy with it. All right, that about does it for this one. This was a fun project. Uh, a lot of work that I did really quickly because the client had some pretty tight time restraints, but overall it came out nice. I know I only have one of the beer handles right now, but you can imagine there'll be three more. Um, and something like this is really easily repeatable and scalable. So if you didn't want to have it for four kegs, you could easily make it for two or for one. You could use it for home use. The wheels make them super portable. And overall, they're not that hard to make. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you wanna see more stuff like this, follow me on Instagram, at Make Everything Shop. I did a whole build along on my stories while I was doing this. If you want to Make Everything gear, you can check out my website and all the other info all down below in the description. And again, thanks for watching. I hope you liked it and I'll see you on the next video.